breaks due to the pandemic. Um, the first session of um, this conference was quite wholesome. We just ended that now. And it was beautiful. It was brilliant seeing her leaders, um, the president and his entourage all the way from Nigeria, and also our regional leaders quite here. We saw um, a massive turnout of ministers in Europe region. It was extremely very encouraging. And uh, it's quite very wholesome. We bless God for the success of this first session. So we're here quite this evening to just bring to you a review of the happenings that, um, of what happens and transpired during the first session that we just um, concluded. Um, my name is Ebenezer Inka Daramola, and I have with me um, to my left, sir, could you please introduce yourself? I'm Pastor Kurede Ayibusi from Christ Apostolic Church, our sort of faith in child refuge. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Pastor Korede. And to my right is? Wali Akinus is my name. I'm from CSC Surpassing Grace Assemblies in Basel, the PC Th precisely. Wow, thank you very much. Uh, God bless. I'm, all from, I'm from Sorry Docs um, in London. So we will be looking at some of the things that happened during the um, first session of the um, program this evening. We had the welcome address by our regional superintendent where he once again reiterated um, the task ahead of us um, in the region. And for me, the one that cut across to me was um, encouraging us to begin to encourage the next generation, the second generation of CAC members um, in Europe. Um, what do you think about um, um, the welcome address from the regional superintendent? Well, that, was, that was quite uh, interesting and uh, very, very in-depth, especially concerning what you spoke about, about uh, chicken laying a egg. That when the chicken lays a egg, it's very good. Everybody likes it. But eventually, the, the laying of the egg is not the end product. Yeah. It still takes some level of endurance, incubation, before another chicken comes out. And that is how we are meant to grow in grace. That was quite um, uh, very fascinating and uh, quite in-depth knowledge. Oh, that, that's very good. So one of the key things for me for, from the regional superintendent's address is he highlighted some of the tasks ahead of us. Which is quite very good because it's just not, it's not good enough for a leader to have objective and vision. But sharing that vision so that we could all latch on to read is done so very well by letting us know the task ahead and the way forward. Um, Pastor um, Wally, so what do you think um, about the objectives and the goals that is being set now? How do you think ministers in the region could latch on to those goals? Which area do you think would be necessary for everyone to come around to support the regional superintendent so that all of those aims and objectives could be achieved? Well, like, like he, said, he said something in his, um, in his speech which caught my attention very seriously and I think is very, it formed the basis for whatever we want to do. And what did he say? He talked about us being alive in Christ and Christ being alive in us. That it is that life of Christ that can make us productive in whatever we want to do. And that is why it is important for everyone, whatever the contribution you are bringing, come with life. And, uh, are, you, are, you, are you in the youth ministry? Come with life. Yes. Are you um, the, in the women, um, whatever? Come with life. Yeah. Are you among the, um, the, the men, Kakma, in Anosike region? Come with life. In whatever capacity you are serving, you come with life. It is that life that you bring on the table that will determine how productive you'll be. Very so good. So it is very, very important for everyone, all ministers, actually, we have to be, if I, when I heard that, I said, wow, what's the, what's this? And, 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 and when I was looking at it, I said, even the seed that you sow to the ground, that means life has to be in it before it can germinate. Yes, true. And true. that is why true. I see that and every one of us has got one seed or the other to plant, True. to sow to the ground, in order to bring a very um, a good fruit out of it. So yeah. being productive, you have to come there, go there, do whatever you want to do there with life. Yeah. So, um, so Pastor what he said, if I can just add a bit to that, what he said mainly, like to add to what my brother just said, is that uh, you can only grow when you are alive. True. Mm. You can only grow. That's very deep. You can only grow when you are alive. In as much as you are still living, Mm. there's tendency for you to grow for your ear to grow, for your life to grow the same thing for us to grow in grace we first have to be alive in Christ 
the number one thing is for us to be alive. It gives so many important factors that we that will help us to grow in Christ, uh, including boldness. He said, you have to be bold in Christ. It will enable you to grow. And we have to be alive, like my brother just said. Yeah. Be alive in Christ for us to grow. He also talked about, um, he also spoke about the word of God. He also spoke about the word of the written word. The, Jesus Christ said, if, if, if my word lives in you and you live in me, mm. he said, then you can ask anything in my name and I will do it. Okay. So the first thing is for us to be rich in the word of God. Because if there's poverty of the world, yeah. you'll grow. Well, if you, like you said, if you plant a seed, and the seed is lacking food, in nutri nutrients, yeah. and water, and resources, um, there's tendency for that seed to, to die off. Yeah. But if it's adequately uh, watered, nutrients is provided, the same thing, what water does for the seed is the same thing the Word of God does for us as children of God. Very, very good. And, and, and that's, that's very key. And you would realize that just immediately after um, the opening speech from the regional superintendent, the general superintendent himself reiterated virtually all of this because this conference in itself is about growth in the knowledge and understanding of, um, of Christ mm. through grace. And that is key that if there's going to be transformation, it's going to, if there's going to be change, if we're going to make meaningful changes you know, in our ministry, in our church, we need understanding, we need knowledge. And that boils down to the three cardinal points of our president, Pastor Ladele. You know, he's looking at, you know, how we can strengthen ourselves in the area of evangelism, unity and reconciliation, and in trying to re-educate ourselves, you know, knowledge, seeking to train, to advance um, our knowledge. And that's one of the things that this conference tends to achieve, you know, to re-educate us, to re-energize us, so that by the time we go back to our various destinations and assemblies, you know, we will begin to manifest this understanding um, mm. of Christ Jesus. And it, it was very, it was very amazing to see the general superintendent. To me, uh, this was the first time I was seeing him. Um, I would be seeing him um, at close proximity since he assumed the leadership um, as the general superintendent. Um, I mean, that's um, our daddy, Pastor Emmanuel Odojobi. What do you think about his? Um, about having him and about his delivery today. I actually have not even met, except for the fact that it, during his inauguration, I have never seen him before or met him. But having a close uh, um, proximity to him now, as in, if, and the message, I've never heard him speak, uh, uh, preach before. I've never listened to any of his messages. But today, the way he started, I was like, where's this, where's, where's, where's Baba going? And when he began to bring up those things, I said, wow, this is depth of knowledge here. This is, it was, it was mind-blowing because even he cracks our ribs, but yet he passes on the message. True, true. So he's balancing true. the human side of him to, especially when it goes to that fella issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that fella yeah, issue. Yeah, that was a nice crack. Everything. Yeah, And I could yeah. see the, some of the congregations even singing along the, yeah. the songs. I said, wow. Yeah. This is beautiful. So it's, it's, you can tell it's a man that is loaded with the world. Actually. Very well, very well. We bless God for the, for the type of leadership we have this time around. Mm. So when you listen to that, you're like daily mm. preach. You just begin to imagine that, are mm. you in a different Christ Apostolic Church? Yeah. It just makes things so beautiful. And, you know, it's, 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 it's really, um, we're thankful to God that in our time we're seeing this, we're yeah. seeing our leaders, you know, making us proud doing this church proud, leading us in the, in the right direction. It's such a great thing. Um, Actually, I, I've known Dad Odejobi for a very, very long time in Christ Apostolic Church, right from Agege Shiraba. That was in Lagos many years ago. Although in other parts of Nigeria, apart from Lagos, some other CAC, but in Lagos State, most Christ Apostolic Church know Baba Odejobi as a firebrand. Mm. Believe me, everybody knows him as a firebrand. And, uh, but you should know that in Christ Apostolic Church example, for instance, you can't come to that kind of position without the insight of Holy Spirit choosing you out. True, true, out of true. so millions of thousands true, of people. True. And today, glory be to God, the glory of God does not diminish. You can see the fire of God in his life. Like he said, we laugh, but the message, the was message is passed on. We, 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 we bless God for that. Look, it, actually, this conference is for pastors, but believe me, I really wish that even people that are not pastors, that members have access. That's thank God for 
uh, social media. I hope a lot of them will be able to join the Yes, line. and, and that because is why our, our pastors have to go back to reiterate these yeah. things to, to, to our people because out there. Look, you can't, you, you, you don't miss this kind of No, nah, no, nah, it's a golden and, one. And yeah, okay. So, so, sorry, yeah. talking about the president, we, you mentioned something about his messages. The first time I had a very close encounter with him was in 2013 when he came to one of our churches in Lutzen. And he preached a message that has never left me since that, day, since that year, passing through your home valley. Wow. He, he, the way he, 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 he dealt with Psalm 23, I was like, wow. So for ev every time I have opportunity to listen to any of his messages, whether online or I, if I, yesterday, I was still listening to one when he was preaching about um, pastors and talking about his own life experience that he, do, he does not have to struggle with anybody for any position because when God called him, God did not tell him he was going to become the president of CSA. So he runs his own race at his own yeah, pace, yeah. dwelling on, on, on the grace of God. And that's powerful. Wow, that's great. That's powerful. Um, I've been following him for quite a very long while from a very little age. You know, when I stumbled on my dad's notebook from the theology, and all of the, it was said by Pastor Esso Ladele, he actually taught my dad at the wow. theology. Wow. So wow. it was some of those books I inherited. And when I had opportunity of then physically meeting him, when I attended some services at CSU Kibukuno Sasami, I felt like oh, yeah. this, is a, this is a very <laughs> powerful man. We bless God for this time. Mm. Yeah, so the main topic of the day, the first lecture mm. of this um, program, by Pastor Tukesi, um, who is actually the, the DCC superintendent for London DCC and also the principal for St. Joseph Christian College. It was a lecture that, at the beginning, people were not sure where that lecture was going mm -hmm. because it was meant to handle a topic that was not popular mm. within, our, within our religious sure. context. True. You know, True. because the issue of sexuality most times is being seen as an esoteric philosophical um, debate. People mm. feel like it has to be discussed, discussed privately by some set of people. But bringing such topics to limelight was like, okay, where's this man going? And he dealt with it very, very seriously. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the lecture well, to start with? For me, you see, when I first looked at the, um, the topic I was going to speak about, the first thing that came to my mind was, why sexuality the very first day of the minister's conference? Was there anything going on among ministers? Because of course, we know we are here for ministers' conference. So I was just trying to, and again, I was trying to break the topic down. Grace, knowledge, sexuality, Christianity. Bringing all those things. And I was, okay. So I came empty just to come and see what God will present to us through that. And when he began to speak about those things, um, the, especially the topic, I said, wow. God must, God must have prepared him well for us to learn what he wants us to learn. Because he did not just deal with sexuality, just yeah. on the, he went to different aspects, different views yeah. of I was coming to sexuality. That. Yeah. And before the fall and after, after the, fall. the fall. And that was what nailed it for me. Wow, it was perfect. You know, he, he, there were three key fundamental world view that he started with. He started with a naturalistic view. This naturalistic view is that People believe that your sexual um, exposure or your sexual taste is born out of your natural state. That it just happens naturally. And that's why some people would say that I'm gay because that's the way I naturally mm -hmm. feel. And he talks about the humanistic view that if both of us agree this is what we, how we want to do it, yeah. it is right. You know, regardless of what the Bible says. And, uh, and he talks about the ascetic view where some people out of holiness think that no, this has, he, he, you know, the general view is that it affects your spirituality if you dwell so much on, on this. What are your views about this, um, Pastor Corede? Wow. Pastor Tukasi actually dealt with that, um, with that topic in details, to do with sexuality, uh, Christianity, in the knowledge and the grace of God. Um, I, I just wish we had talked a bit more about um, some other aspects. Like um, that, with the widows and the widower, there's a serious, there's a reason why I actually said that. Like, because, um, and widow and widower, let's leave that in the quotes, I'm coming to it. And also, what is actually going on in this country at the moment transgenderism, that children from 10, 11, 12, 13, I heard of a case of a 13 year old that was, they changed, they were, she was in the hospital 
trying to change their sexuality or, or um, biologically without the knowledge of the parents. Mm. And these kind of things are going on. Yes. And uh, in the church, we are not, it's not that we are, Jesus Christ is tolerant. Jesus Christ, because if you try to go against certain opinions, then you'll be, you say you are you'll not. You'll to be politically incorrect. Incorrect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you are not tolerating. Yeah, you're not tolerant. It's not that we're not being tolerant. <laughs> yeah. But we are just looking at the effect, because in the last, in this 21st century, a lot of things is going on. Things that you can't even believe. And like Pastor Tukasi said, these are the people we are to minister to. These are the people that we are to worship God together with. Mm. If a man and a man comes to your church and you know that two of them have a relationship, they are gay, for instance. Sorry to use that word. That they are queer or gay and they are your church member. Are you going to cast them out? Are you going to fight them? Mm. How do you still, with the love of Christ, accept them mm -hmm. and be talking to them in the knowledge of Christ? Are yeah. you following me? Yeah. So those aspects especially is very, very essential. And uh, don't forget, when we, when, we, when we talk in the church, we have to look at the demography. Mm. In that place today, there are a lot of widows. Mm. Don't forget. Mm. There are a lot of widowers. There are a lot of single, single ladies. Mm. Understand? Single, maybe the pa Single parents, yeah. Single parents and the rest. So, um, asexuality also, how does it apply? How are widows? Because Paul says so many things. The Bible says so many things about widows. And how... They are to, Paul said, if you can't be by yourself, then get married. Mm. But some people are above the age. I think there's need for church to also talk to them on how to live without a partner. Yeah. So talking about sexuality, it's good for us to, because to Christianity is mainly about marriage and family. But some people are in the church of Christ and they are outside that demography. And we still have to carry to them, them as well. But today, Pastor Tukas did very well. To be honest with you, he dealt with them into details, but time is never enough. Yeah. I'm sure he would have wanted to go into some other aspect of uh, sexuality. Because as far as Christian is concerned, we be, our, our, there's a body of Christ today that we have seen that in a church, you see uh, Steve getting married to Michael. Yeah. But in our... In <laughs> Because I, I went through some legal details. Yes, I, I, was, I was going to talk about so, that because um, if, you, if you look at um, our community now, mm -hmm. um, the United Kingdom, yeah. you know, in context now, you see, sexuality has been defined in a different way. And there's been a tolerant view on individual perspective mm -hmm. about what it is. And, and that's why you find that even churches find it difficult to come up with issue of sexuality now because they don't know what's going to happen. Mm. The, some of the denominations in England, in the, in the, in the United Kingdom, they've, they've been tolerant now. They feel like they, allow they, they can allow mm. same-sex allow marriage and, and, and all of that. And all they want to do is to please everyone. Yeah, exactly. you know? But the truth is that you know, we cannot please everyone. Yeah. We have to, there's a standard for us, which is the Bible. Yeah. Right. So what do you think about how sexuality could be handled generally now, you know, being taught in church, so that people do not get carried away mm. by what the society now thinks is the norm. People see, there are people that, we have people now that say, you can't refer to me as he or she, said mm. I'm not a man, I'm not a woman, I'm yeah. not this. Mm. How should we handle those? Ah, thank you, thank you, my brother. You see, w one thing there is this, and which I, I'm happy Pastor Tukasi also, uh, um, also mentioned it, and that is the issue of boundary. You see, he mentioned something that a society without boundary allows anything. Anything, yeah, true. So in Christianity, what happens to us is we have we maintain our boundary, even though we are in that society. That, that's why the Bible says we are in the world, but, but not, not the of world. the world. Yeah. I'll give you an example. We were in church one day, and two ladies showed up, and before the service, they said, "Oh, blah blah blah," greeted them. Oh, we are gay? Oh, we gave them a hug, everybody. To be honest, we gave them a hug. We, we greeted them, we made them welcome. But one thing we did not compromise is we made sure they had sound teaching before they leave. And that was the only time, that was the last time they came. Mm. If we have failed to let them know the real truth that day, that might be the last opportunity they will have. Who knows? So for the church of God today, 
we need even though we want to make sure we carry everybody along yes we want to accommodate everybody that's the word they used to use yeah. accommodate us let us feel welcome let us feel part of the church but we still have to maintain the sound teaching that has been given and you can see pastor Suka has also mentioned it today those are the views of the world the ascetic the the, um, the, the humanistic, humanistic the those are the but this is the bible standard true in the bible standard there is a boundary that is and where there is a boundary, then if you go beyond the boundary, you know there are consequences for it. True. So that is where we stand as Christians. Hmm. And, and, and that is true. Um, and we should always say this loud and clear. Because most of the times we, we tend to um, fall under the voices of the crowd. And we get sink hmm. off in that. In fact, can I tell you something? There was a program we had with the youth in one of our churches in Northampton. And... There was this um, other Ghana church just beside. We're using the same hall. So I approached the pastor and I said, we're having a youth um, program. And that church was mainly youth. So the man said, oh, that's fine. If it's for the, for the youth, we'll join you. And so they closed their own service and they joined us. And what we were dealing with was about sexuality and what is happening now in, in the UK and generally in the world. So, and when we began, I told some parents, I said, please, if you, know, if you know that you'll be scared with what your children will be saying, you better go to the back or excuse us and come back after two hours. Mm. You'll be amazed with what all these young chaps were saying. The information they already you, have. You, where I stopped, me, where, me, I think, oh, this is where it is. They said, no, they pastor, they are that. still... Yeah. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, wow. Yep. And that is why the, our, teen and, um, teen, um, our teen ministry should not shy away from their responsibility mm. in bringing this knowledge to our younger ones. We might think they don't know. They know. It is important. Because most of the times, if they don't get the information from the right source, they go seek for it elsewhere yes, and, and, and it gets corrupted for them. And they give yeah. the wrong information. They, got the, they get the wrong information. So it's important yeah. for our teen church, you know, and our, te I mean, our, our teenagers to also get sexual um, education from the right age. We know, like I said, it's a topic we don't want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Even sometimes parents don't want to talk about it. But this is the reality of the day. We need to talk about it. Otherwise, we would fall victim of it. Pastor Cody, what do you think? You are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. It's very important for parents to give their children sex education. Because um, recently, one of my sons came home, and uh, I saw they were give, they've been taught about sex at age of 10. In school already. Oh sure. They have been given <laughs> what I'm, I believe, and you, the parents, you are not, you are not giving them education. I'm sorry to say, and some of these teachers, some of them are, mm -hmm. you know, they same sex marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Same, I'm not condemning them. Yeah. But now, if th that kind of person is giving your children sex education Knowledge. that you can't give them, true. Yourself. So it's very important for parents to give their children to talk to them openly, mm. talk to them between you and them. Mm -hmm. By the time you build that trust. They will be able to tell you many things that you don't even know. Mm. Like, like uh, Pastor Wally said, that those those children you calling kids, they know some things that mm. you don't even know. They don't know. So it's always good for parents to, and not only that, it's good for church to create the avenue, maybe youth services to talk to youth, to, to give them platform, yeah. to speak their mind mm. about the challenges they are going through. Maybe some of them are going through challenges; they are not even free to talk to their to own parents. parents. But if the church gives them the platform. They can be able to come up mm. and oh, and open up so that they can be properly advised instead of going outside to get the wrong advice. Yes, I, I pray God will help us. It's it's um it's it's an area that we need to focus on. Oh, that's that's very beautiful. Um, on that first lecture, and we look forward to more of these um very um enlightening um lectures um also from tomorrow, um, for the programs for tomorrow, we've got. We've got lectures, um, um, just to give an overview, we'll be having the second lecture by uh, the regional superintendent from, um, from Latunde, from Latunde, North American, Latunde. and Pastor Agbeja. He will, he will be talking about grace and knowledge as catalysts for effective um, community engagements. And also we'll be having our regional superintendent, Pastor Ola Doku, will be talking on grace and knowledge as catalysts for purity and a ministerial vocation. What do you think we should look out for in, this, in the, tomorrow, um, in the yeah. topics we're having for tomorrow? Well, for me, uh, I would say that everybody should just come empty in order to take more. You, if you come filled up and somebody's giving you something else, you, yeah. you, you, there's, there's no way to, to but open up everything. 
and then come to come and um, as much as you can take. There's something, there's a place they used to call all you can eat. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we have that in my, in my <laughs> area. <laughs> Lutin, <laughs> where we, yeah. It's like all you can eat. So come tomorrow full of expectations and as much as you can take from God tomorrow. I believe everybody should come there and, and take something. And for me, um, uh, if I may say this for the, um, regarding what we discussed today, that if our church, if our church can create that platform where the youth can be um, taught thoroughly the sound word, and we should create an avenue for them to be able to come up with, discuss things. Like Pastor Kwede was saying something about his, um, his child. My own eight year, uh, nine year old daughter too came, and she, she wanted to talk about sex, but she looked at me, looked at her mom, the body language, I knew she wanted to say something. Mm. So I just, I signaled to my wife, relax, relax. Yeah. So we, I started engaging her. What she was telling me, I, I, I was shocked. And I was like, oh, so I now educated her more. Wow. So we explained from the point of the Bible, how myself and my wife, how we be, so, so those are the things. If we begin to do that too, I know we are doing that, but if we intensify more in it, we do more. Yeah. I think that will help us. Thank you very much, um, Sars, for coming on tonight. Um, it's been very um, amazing. Um, it's been a blessed day for every one of us. We've been blessed, and we look forward to more of these blessings tomorrow. So um, we will be back at 8 a.m. We'll be back at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, um, where we'll be having our daddy, the regional superintendent. Um, he'll be talking to Ross um, very early tomorrow morning. I'll be having representative of the CACMA, that's the CAC um, Men Association. Um, so we will, it would be really nice if you can um, keep a date with us at um, 8.30 um, tomorrow morning. And um, we believe that you'll be blessed. Once again, Pastor Corrida, thank you very much for, for coming on this program this evening. Thanks. And also, um, so Pastor Wale, it's, it's been so it's very amazing. Pleasure, pleasure, and uh, we hope that um, this conference, um, we would all uh, be blessed um, and would go home re-energized um, on Friday. Amen. Thank you very much Amen. and um, you, God Thanks bless you. Thank yeah. you sir.